know, he, he did what he did what I wanted him to do, man. And then he broke it down all the way to where he couldn't really even so many punches back. And then first he could, he had a little something on the punches back. He just, he just started hitting a little bit more. Hey, coach, how much better can he be? Coach, how much better can he be? How much better do you feel Arrow can get? Man, listen, man, just watch the tennis court Just wait, wait and see? We, we just got to wait now? I don't think take all that Hey, Derek, congrats on the fight. Hey, um, he started, EJ started off with the jab and going to the body like he always does. And then from the fourth round on, he completely was inside of Ugas. Was that, was that the plan all along? Well, it was like, either we're going to fight him on the inside, we're going to fight him on the outside. It was like, fight him on the outside to the extent of one seat. Once you see him getting on the inside, there's nothing to do about it. You keep going back in there. He had no inside fight. Did you expect him to stand there though? He didn't run. He didn't run around. With this thing about it, he couldn't move. Okay. Those body shots. He uh, move. So it really slowed him down. I mean, there. he kept turning, but he yeah, really got couldn't. You, got he you. couldn't bounce away. Yeah. yeah. Even when he got hurt, he was kind of. Yeah, yeah. You know, he couldn't really move. So Just stay there, embrace out. himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Darren, uh, you just brought up the, the long layoff as you know, part of that. Issue. It was 14 months after the car accident and about a year and a half now since the, the Tetris. Obviously, you being in the gym with him, did you did you kind of know it was gonna go this way, or you, like you knew for sure that Earl was good, or was it his performance kind of solidifying like what you guys saw in the gym? I, I knew that. I knew that I was hoping that the performance would be good. I know he was very smooth, very kind. so so ideally to you, when would you like to see Arrow in the ring against like tennis? Obviously. Mm. Coach, how you feel? You're extremely so spoken, but I remember I seen an interview where people kept talking about Terrence. It sounded like a really good thing. I didn't know. It was there that I got people. I'm just like, because he did what he said he said he was going to do. Everybody wants what they want on their, their own time, but they don't do that. Their, their own life is not like that. You know what I'm saying? So he, this is his life. He chose to say, what did he say? Somebody tell what he said. I'm going to clean out everybody on this side of the street, and then I'm going to come get you. That's what he said. So, did he do that? Yeah. Okay, so what did everybody talk about? <laughs> so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Everybody was trying to say, hey, man, he, said he did what he said he was going to do. So, it wasn't that I was pissed off. It's just like, listen, man, he just, like, just got to be like, he said he did exactly, he's a man of his word. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Derek, Coach. with the nutritionist. Now you said he's a lot. Is it all aspects of his game are better now with the nutrition? No, I just think that his physicality, he's able to be more physically, able to be more stronger, a lot stronger. He's able to use his body more to and shots and shoots his body. And he was digging deep, and that, and that, that made the difference. I think that Ugas' offense was like he took it away from him. Derek, who's the, who's the better puncher when we when it goes down? Crawford got ten knockouts in a row, but Spence looks like the heavy-handed national. Ten knockouts in a row against who? Mm -hmm. Solid guys along the way. Sean Porter, to be fair, he did. Oh, Sean man. Porter. Sean Porter's daddy said I was going to stop the fight before the fight. Mm. Didn't he say that? Mm. So what does that mean? Mm. I think he, he, he No, no, no. What that meant mm. was he was showing Sean he's still the boss. There was a power struggle going on in mm. there. And what did Sean do when the dad did stop the fight? What did he do? He retired and didn't tell Yeah. Ask him when the last time he talked to his dad. The mm. night they was in the corner. Uh -oh. I spoke to him anymore. Uh -oh. So there was a power struggle going on. The father wanted to prove him that he still was the boss. Coach so James, Coach James, James. <laughs> you got three belts with Errol. You got three belts with Jermel. That's six belts for you. How does that feel? And, and, and where do you go from there? You look to get eight? Hey, man, we want to get eight. 
by the end of the year, it's part of the game, you know what I'm saying? I don't even think about that, that part of it. I just want these guys to keep winning, keep looking better, keep being better, because it's kind of difficult to, I just want to keep But as, as someone who has been left off a trainer of the year list, yeah, I've seen them, yeah. and, know what, and ignored what, for trainer of the year but, list, but, to have six belts, but, how do you feel? Like, isn't that a statement you know in the game of boxing? Me, no, somebody, said, somebody said, it's messed up that he doesn't get it, but he said that you can't take that to the bank. Mm. Derek, I, mm. I just wanted to kind of piggyback off Sean's um, statement when he said Crawford has 10 knockouts in a row, and then he said again too. So are you kind of saying that Crawford... I'm just saying he hasn't faced the same competition, same level of competition. But are you kind of also saying that Crawford's power is a little bit overstated? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I've never seen him fight for like two or three times. I don't watch a lot of boxing. I do not watch boxing. But I'll start watching when we start trying to go to fight. Right when they, they come to they feel a bit. Derek uh, just got done with the huge fight four weeks from today. Another huge one right. in California this time. Um, the rematch with Castano for undisputed. Uh, just your thoughts on heading into the rematch. This is going to be round 13. We're starting on round 13. Just like the last four. Does, does it excite you the uh, idea to know Jermel? You know his next fight is for undisputed and. Earl, we're hoping his next fight's for undisputed. Does that excite you to know? Uh, no, I think that I don't think about it, man. Because you, you think about those trinkets, you can't focus on the situation. Well, you don't have a situation right now. No, I'm saying, you know, I'm saying you can't focus on the fight. Mm. The fight is them getting better. I'm thinking about the prize, the prize, the prize, and I'm missing steps in between that because I'm thinking about I'm putting one thing before the other. I have to take. I live every day step by step. I have to focus on something every day. I, I gotta ask your thought. Uh, recently, Jamal Charlo was on the Mike Tyson podcast, and Mike said that he would love to see Earl move up to 54 to fight Mel. Um, he's like, yo, if that's if they if they really friends, let's get some bread together. Just, I mean, obviously you train both fighters, you wouldn't be able to train both of them in that fight. But just your idea on Mike's comments, and uh, do you think that's true? Like, if, if, I didn't if, see it. Mm. I didn't see it, but I'm not, I mean, I'm not thinking about it. People talking about it, I'm not thinking about it. I don't, I mean, I'm not, I don't want it. You know, I mean, it'll be a big deal, but I don't want it. I mean, I think that they'll, they'll talk about whatever. And it's like the Jamel can be the high bunch of champ for the world, whatever, you know, understand it. That doesn't mean, see, Errol is at a point, some people out there, it is, I don't think it was about them fighting for a title to brought him in. I think he would be able to sell anyway. Absolutely. I mean, so that's about it. Guys, don't leave. Yeah, I couldn't really see it. Well, listen, I really couldn't see it. So I'm going back. And then after the referee explained to me, he explained to me what happened. He kind of like, okay, you realize what happened when he got hit while he was on the break, basically. And so, you know, so I was like, man, oh my God, like, how is this going to work? He, he made it covered, man. And they had to put the mouthpiece in. So he's like, I couldn't put the mouthpiece in right then, so we had to let him, you know, whatever. So when he was blown, he had to put it in. In, in that moment when he comes over to you to clean the mouthpiece, are you cognizant of maybe yeah, I gotta like, listen, step a little slower on the step or something, you know what I mean? I just, you know, one more time. You gotta think about it, you know, it's, 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 it's a game. Part of the game. It's, 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 Hey, coming into this fight, you know, there's a, there's a big crowd, hometown fight. Earl seemed to be a lot, a lot more relaxed when he never knew why he's ever been. What do you contribute to? I think that he's happy to be here, man. I think that if you think about this, man, when you come out and see what you see and see what you saw, that's, that's an emotional moment, man. Think about you see all these people out here came to see you fight. Hey, man, that's crazy. I mean, it's like they, they spend their hard earned money. I mean, COVID, I mean, I'm sure everybody, I got COVID in the morning. We can't even move. We can get some shit up in there. I'm like, hey, don't tell me what's going on. That's what it is. What do you think, they, think they come out, Derek? Huh? What, what do you think it is about Earl that draws the people? Because they, they think they're going to see that with their just soul. That's what they're going to see. That thing in particular, the way he fights, the way he breaks it down. He's a fighter. He's not trying to be free. You know, he's very technically sound. Yeah, he saved the jazz like the whole fight. The inside game is amazing. 
Isn't his style kind of Texas? Like it manifests tech, like just straightforward, no bullshit. Just... I'm from Texas. Right. <laughs> 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 I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I think that when they have a strong defensive, a fact like a strong defensive perspective, you can go forward or backwards. You don't have to do, you know, you don't have to do what somebody wants you to do. You do that with these people or whatever. That's it. Can you, um, can you kind of explain what makes turn corporate so great? You got, you got angry after that. Uh, <laughs> Mm. Well, Friday, man, it, 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 what Terrence Crawford is a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal athleticism. That's what it is. He's athleticism. But athleticism is always fleeting. Mm. Remember that. Athleticism is fleeting. And when you get to a certain point, whatever age it is, don't know what it is, look at the other fighter who loves him to death. He talks about it. You know that guy? What's his name? Tim Bradley. He used to be a champ. Tim Bradley? No, no, no. no. Andre Those Ward? Andre Speed's a champ. Um, he talks about Errol. Like oh, Sam Judah? No, 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 no. Tim Bradley? Heavier, heavier, heavier. Uh, there we go. Roy Jones. Yeah. Phenomenal athlete, right? Mm. Athleticism mm. left. Mm. But, I mean, that's a fair point, but I think usually when people talk about Crawford, the first thing they mention is IQ as opposed to... Hey, man, to listen, play. man, I'm telling you what I see. Mm. <laughs> I mean, listen, athleticism is very quick, like a cat. It's movement. Have you, quick. have you already seen that decreasing? No, I haven't seen I think he's, I think he's, I think he's going to look great. He's looking from, they are not decreasing, man. <laughs> 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 Derek, Derek. So does that mean he's got the speed event? Is that the edge of speed day? Because what you're talking about, speed is all about timing. Speed is phenomenal. Time and be speed. My man right here, man. My man right here. Frank Martin. My man right here. Frank Martin's right here. My man. He's getting ready to come up. Yeah, you're working. You're working. Frank Martin, you saw uh, Isaac Cruz tonight. What was your assessment as far as his performance at 135 against uh, the rookies come boy? He did what he was supposed to do. I'm I'm 50 years old. He was he's 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. hey, 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 Frank. Like hey, hey, Frank. About, uh, Frank, what performance and, and just what he did? Hey, man, y'all take Frank Law. I'm about to get out of here. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Coach, let me ask you. Uh, you know, first and foremost, Coach, congratulations on the victory. Uh, you know, you guys did a hell of a job. I took you know. Being in camp, <laughs> you know, getting the chance to see you guys in camp, you know, and I told you how impressed I was, and it felt like Earl had a huge chip on his shoulder, and it just felt so different about him. Uh, you told me before the fight he was going to have a spectacular performance, and he did just that. Do you feel that this is the best victory as far as you uh, being his head coach, going overseas, winning the fight, yeah, uh, defeating uh, Sean Porter, getting that WBC See how far I am behind these chumps. For the WBA, how satisfying is it for you as a coach? And is it, would you say it's your, uh, like, are you impressed most by this victory than any of the other ones? You know funny, man? When I do the boxing thing, it's like, um, it's not so satisfying. I think that, I think that I'm just happy we got what we came out of here. So really, I'm more relieved than anything. I feel accomplished. But at the same time, I don't think about the other aspect. I just think that we want them to be great, we want to try to be better. And he did well. I mean, because it doesn't matter, like, if I went to the other year, my guys look horrible. They look so far. And then we look, 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 the, the guy who they gave to the year two, the year I was supposed to get it, the last time, the guy from Ring Magazine told me that Tiffimo win was more significant than mine. My two. Mm. Bringing Errol back from the car accident, and Jamel coming in there, four fights that year. And he said that, that, that one win was better than my fight. So what happened? His next fight he lost. <laughs> then we got to beat him lost. So it's like, you, you know, that's the game, man. You know, you can't. I'm, it's, my life is all about being consistent. It ain't about, you know, you get a flash. You know, I want to be consistent. Derek, uh, is, a, is, is Charlo the guy that can make all the adjustments and not Castano? Like Castano can yeah, only I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't know. I think Castano's a good fighter, man. He's a great fighter. I think that, you know, but Jamel has to go out there and be the best version of himself. He cannot come out here. Relax and do whatever. You gotta be out there doing something. Derek, I gotta ask you: You being involved with two upcoming um, undisputed fights, you saw Canelo undisputed last year, uh, along with Josh Taylor, and now not just the two fights you're involved in, but Devin Haney 
he's fighting for undisputed as well. Do you think that this is what the sport needed to see? You know, uh, we heard Deontay Wilder reach out to all the time, uh, one face, one day for each division. Do you think that it's helped the sport of boxing? I think that it's probably, you know, helpful, but I think it's a limit to me to fight because these guys who are number one got to wait till you got to fight. Because every year you got to fight a mandatory and you got to fight. You get, you get one fight to fight, right? So that's, by the time that WBA champ or whatever gets shot, that's four years. So it's like, it's kind of difficult at the same time. Because those guys, like, say you be number one in WBA.